All right, the Insurance Committee of the Board of Education will convene on Wednesday, on Wednesday September 7th, 2016 at 5 p.m. It is now 5.05 in the P PDC room at Central Office, 102 Jennings San Antonio, Texas, 78214, 2997 Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Meeting called to order by my, myself, Juan Mancha. Uh, Mr. Carlos Quesada said he was not gonna be able to make the meeting today. So he shared his information that he wanted us to acknowledge from, uh, with Ms. Ojardo and myself. Ms. Herman Casares, we just got notification, she'll be running a little bit late. To my right, uh, Mr. Madrigal is here. To my left, Ms. Uh, Tudek and Ms. Ojardo. Item two, citizens to be heard, 15 minute times, 15 minute limit total, three minute maximum per speaker. Citizens are offered an opportunity to address the board Without prior approval, the board, however, will not commit comments or engage in discussion. Presentations shall be informative only, no board action will be taken. The topics addressed shall be limited to those specifically included in the committee's agenda. Presentations shall not include statements which may be considered defamatory, inflammatory, and or threatening against a person or the district. The speaker shall not mention student's name unless naming your own child, nor address the complaint against the district employer or officer. Such complaints shall be handled through guidance set in the district policy. At all other times, members of the public shall not enter into any discussion, debate matters being considered by the committee. And we have one person signed up. And just to, to remind everybody, by board policy, nobody can sign in for you. Okay, we need to make sure we remember that. If you cannot make it on time, you know, it, it, it's, I know sometimes it's hard and it's a hard effort, but just to be, and the other thing is when you fill out this thing, if we just not have your address, okay, we, we do not have the right to acknowledge you. So when you sign up to Citizen to be heard, you have to fill it out completely. Okay, Ms. De Leon. Good evening, Mr. Mancha, Superintendent Madrigal. My name is Claudia De Leon, and I am an employee of Hardendale ISD. I've been an employee of Hardendale ISD for the past 17 years. I am here today to express my personal experience with the current agent of record, First Financial, and other several uh, HESA members as well. In the fall of 2014, uh, I actually, I'm sorry, in the fall of 2013, I enrolled with First Financial for the very first time, utilizing it, of course, uh, that new, uh, new year, which was 2014. Um, and uh, I was enrolled by a First Financial employee, not a Harlandale uh, employee. The enrollment session uh, this past year, as we all know, was, uh, was, uh, was a little later than normal. And uh, it was very rushed. In fact, we, uh, if I recall, there wasn't enough first financial enrollers and uh, we were a little backed up. Fast forward to the present time, uh, I injured my knee and uh, actually I, when I was breaking my patella, uh, I did this at home, and it's kept me out of work for the past three and a half months. I won't be able to return till mid-October. My first disability check reflect, reflected the wrong uh, payroll information, and it was uh, $2,125 less than I'm currently earning. When I called First Financial and I spoke with Mr. Uh, Gill, I, I apologize, I don't remember his last name, or Gill is his last name, but nonetheless, uh, he informed me that it was uh, Harlandale ISD that had provided him with that income information. Naturally, you know, I, I, I then I called uh, the uh, benefits department and I spoke with uh, Mrs. Wajarro and uh, I was uh, informed that uh, Region 20 had all the employee information and it was First Financial that was supposed to download this information from Region 20. Harlandale never gave them any information. So First Financial, you know, in a sense, threw Harlandale ISD under the bus and its employees. 
Getting $1,400 a month is what I'm now given. I pay $866 a month for my uh, health and auxiliary insurance, leaving me with a total of $534 a month to live on. I mean, that's, it's insane. And I feel Hardendale employees are not a priority of First Financial. Because of careless mistakes like this, I feel that it's, 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 it's a sloppy handling of our employees, uh, a sloppy handling and our employees are the ones suffering. Uh, this is not good business practice. And you know, the definition of insanity is to continue doing the same thing and then expecting different results in the end. And we cannot continue doing the same thing. It doesn't make sense. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Jones. At this time, we're going to go to item three. Re review results of agent of record presentation. Ms. Wajardo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just wanted to go over the information I received from the presentation for the agents of record. I do have the scorecard results, which were provided in your booklet. Just wanted to confirm um, what the recommendation. I'm hoping to put the information on the board meeting agenda for the 19th, but I need to know uh, what recommendation will be made at that time. Thank you. Proceed. Okay, so the first item I have is I did uh, meet with Mr. Quesada this afternoon, and I'd like to read to you the um, information that he's presented. After review of the results and meeting with staff and members of the community, I feel staff recommendation of, of SWBC is best for Harlandel ISD. At this time, it is my number one pick and will person, uh, recommend personally to the full board. So we did want to indicate that on the current score grid. So if you take a look, that would leave the SWC first choice for three, and which would kind of tie that up with first financial, who also was a first choice for three. Okay, Ms. Wanda, just real quick, just in, just, some of you have a copy of this? And I spoke to Mr. Quesada also, and uh, on here you're going to notice that he's got on fourth SWBC. So just to answer your question on that, he said he had spoken to, he said, I spoke to Ms. Wanda, I also spoke to some of the office personnel, and they kind of changed my mind and uh, asked me how I felt about SWBC. So at the time, I, I decided to rank them number one. So just from me speaking to him over the phone, that was his recommendation over the phone. So Ms. Mojardo is correct. So what you see here, he kind of changed it. So just to notify everybody, because you're going to see this, and then what after what you hear her, her saying, I don't want you to say, that's not what, what the reflection is. So just notifying you what the reflection is coming from him himself. And I didn't speak to him personally. I spoke to him over the phone, but that was his recommendation. So, Mr. Moncha, um, Mr. Chair, um, so what, what we would like to bring to the September meeting is just so that we can, can continue and, um, and moving forward is this is the, the, the right meeting to bring an agent of record to the board. Um, and so we would like to put that on the agenda. And so um, we would like to proceed with your, with your advice or your recommendation as to how to move forward. As do you want us to take uh, the agent of record and let the full board discuss, or do you want to have a recommendation from the committee? At this time, ma'am, I don't feel that the, the committee should have a recommendation, just uh, mainly because of, right now it's just myself. Uh, Ms. Casa, this is in here. Mr. Casa is not here personally. And looking at Ms. Casa, this uh, and myself both agree first financial, um, but Mr. Casada is on uh, SWBC now. And Ms. Wajardo also has SWBC. HESA has uh, SWBC. And HEA has uh, First Financial. So I think it's kind of a, of a tie there. So my recommendation would be to take it to the full board as the way it is written and presented. As a, those would be the two top picks. 
And then uh, we'll see, we'll take it from there. Uh, Mr. Mancha, in part of what we uh, submit in the, the board packet that's available, of course, this has gone to all our, our board members as per required. Um, do you want us to repeat this grid in the transmittals for the board report? Yes, ma'am, please, with a correction on Mr. Casada's uh, recommendation. Now. Just with that change, and if you can, if you can kind of leave this part the way it's written here, his first choice, and then put a little square bit right below it, and uh, put it on there as a second choice. That this is the one that he recommended the day of the policy meeting. Okay. That way it's understood by everybody. I don't want nobody to question this since they receive this. I don't want any board member to come back and question. Hey, well, you know what happened? That y'all changed your mind, or what, what was the situation? We're going to go ahead and go to item B, review results of group, insur group health insurance RF RP <clears throat> number 10-1708808, Ms. Guajardo. Yes, sir. Thank you. RFP 170808 was for group health insurance. It was first posted the first week of August. I believe it was August the 3rd or the 4th. Um, we originally had anticipated that it would we would open the proposals on August the 18th. We had a request from two vendors that we extend the deadlines if we, they needed some additional information from us. So we did make the extension and we actually opened proposals on August the 31st instead. Um, here in San Antonio, or actually in Texas, we have um, four players that are able to take on a group our size. They're going to be Aetna, Humana, United Healthcare, who is the incumbent, and Blue Cross Blue Shield. So uh, Aetna and Humana for the second year in a row after looking at our premium versus loss reports, declined to offer a proposal, so they preferred not to bid on our business. So we had the renewal proposal, which stood with United Healthcare, as well as Blue Cross Blue Shield did submit a proposal with two alternative plans. After taking a look at the plans, as expected, we did see a premium increase from last year, which going over premiums versus claims that we've been doing since April, was expected. We did not expect to see any type of claims decrease, I'm sorry, premium decrease. Um, we did expect to see an increase. Unfortunately, right now we're running at 135%, which means that we are, not only is United Healthcare paying out 100% of the premium that they're taking in from our group, they're paying out an additional 35%. So what ends up happening is you expect to see some type of an evening out um, where the premiums do have to go up to compensate for the amount of claims that are being paid out. So what we saw here as far as the proposals was what, we, what I was expecting to see. So then what we look at is to determine how do we make the like, least amount of impact on employees overall. So we have to introduce that there is going to be a premium increase, but we do want to ensure that there is adequate coverage in place and try to, of course, diminish that effect as much as possible. So I did a comparison of the two. Um, it looks like one option that we have is staying with our current rates, which is what was proposed by United Healthcare. But as you can see on page three, that's going to cause quite an increase to employees if we stay with what we have. What we currently have are PPO plans where we do not offer out of network benefits. That's one of the trimming of the fact that we did last year is we took away the ability to go to out-of-network providers. So that's one way of kind of keeping claims costs down. Um, so we've already kind of made that adjustment. So staying with that same PPO mentality, we did get a um, from United Healthcare with current plan designs, and we'll see that there's an increase. We have four plans right now, and if you can tell by enrollment, our $500 deductible plan is our second highest enrollment. Our first highest is going to be the $5,000 deductible plan. And as you can see, about 90% of our 1,700 members are employee only coverage. And that's something to look into and just kind of keep in mind. Because although we do want to keep in mind 
our employees that are insuring their families and their spouse, 90% of our people are sitting on an employee-only plan. So that's where we want to make sure that we're looking at overall. So if you take a look at our $500 deductible plan, you'll see that we were offered a 29.3% increase on our $500 and our $3,000 and our $4,000 HSA plan. Our $5,000 deductible, which is where most of our employees are currently at, did offer a 45% increase. And that's on our current plans. So did look at a couple of alternate plan design comparisons. Uh, Flex plan was offered, two plans were offered. One as an alternative to the $500 deductible plan, which increased the deductible to $1,000, and also an alternative to our $5,000 deductible flex plan. So with each of these plans, there is some loss of coverage. We did have to decrease some coverage, and then we also did see some, some type of an increase there. But unfortunately, to keep premiums within range of employees, we are gonna have to make some sacrifices, for lack of a better term. So the flex plan, get on page four of your packet. I have Karen Woods is here also. She's the representative from United Healthcare. So she may need to, if there's any questions, yep. she may be able to answer some of those. So the first alternative plan, which you'll see is option five. That's a flex plan. So what that does is it allows you a certain number of visits, in this case, four visits, under a co-payment. At any visits over four would be subject to deductible. Now we did also find that the average number of visits that employees are using right now is between one and two. So for the most part, several of our employees would still be safe under that four plan, four office visits under the co-payment. There would be some people that would be affected but for the most part, most of our employees would not be. They would be under that one or two visits per year. Mr. Nervous Waddle, can you, can you uh, what was the percentage again of one and two? Um, an the, average, average number of our years. employees, one or two, uh, out of our employees, one or two visits are being used per year. That's the majority? Yes. Okay. So it's an average number, so you're gonna have some who go more often, but for the most part, our average is gonna be one or two visits per year, and this particular plan, offers up to four under a co-payment. Yeah, so with this particular plan, I did a comparison with our current plans that we have now. Um, something to keep in mind, preventative visits do not count. So preventative visits are still covered at 100% and they do not count towards that four per year. So as long as it's preventative visits, it doesn't count towards the four. So option number five is an alternative Mr. Chair, yes, um, just from the group, Ms. Guajardo, the preventative visits, if you could just give an example of what preventative visits are that would not count toward the four. So your preventative visit would be not billed with a diagnosis. That would be when you're going to see the doctor to prevent from being sick. So if you've got kids, they call them wellness visits, where you just go and you have your physical immunization and things like that. One woman exams would be considered preventative. So that's when you're going to a doctor for no reason other than to make sure that you stay healthy. So option number five um, replaces our current, or would be an alternative to our current 500 or high option plan. So the deductible would increase. So instead of being a $500 deductible, it would be a $1,000 deductible. And the family deductible would increase from 1,000 to 2,000. There's also an increase on the out-of-pocket max. An out-of-pocket maximum would be the maximum amount that you would pay out-of-pocket. After that, your insurance covers you at 100%. So that did increase from 3,000 to 4,000 on an individual plan, 6,000 to 8,000 on a family plan. You'll see that there was an increase across the board on all of these plans. Urgent care co-payments are currently $45. Co-payments for urgent care visits would be $100 from this point forward on this plan. There's also an increase in the ER co-payment. It's currently $200. It would increase to 250 plus 20% co-insurance that would go towards deductible. So when looking at these plans and deciding where we are spending our money, we did find that our um, emergency room utilization is very, very high in comparison to our inpatient admission. 
So what we're seeing is that we have a lot of folks going to the emergency room as opposed to going to their PCP or even urgent care visits. So that's kind of one thing that we're looking at. This is where we look to control our costs. So by making an employee or a member more responsible for those bills, we're hoping to start bringing some of those numbers down. We'd also we would see a decrease in copayment. Currently, our copayments are thirty dollars for a PCP. That would go to twenty five dollars, or especially as we go from forty five to fifty. So the out of pocket, while at the doctor, the copayment would decrease just a little bit. So if we go back to page four, we'll see that the current cost to employees two hundred and fifteen dollars per month for employee only. It's on page four. No, it's the one that's titled Alter Alternate Design Plans, Renewal Cost Comparisons, and option five is your first head. Okay, page five. Did you want me to read out the difference there in premium? Okay, so for employee only, which again is where we're gonna see a majority of our membership, is going to be the current cost is $215.01. That would uh, go up to $301.91. The increase to employee would be $86.90. Employee and spouse. So if you have an employee who's covering their spouse, current cost is $949. That would increase to $1,172.03, an increase of $222.31. Current cost to employee who is covering their child in the $500 deductible plan is $902.90. That would increase to $1,116.58, a difference of $213.68. Employee and family, $1,275 is current, $0.90, with the proposed cost at $1,558.32, so $282.42. So when looking at that in increases, I have not really recommending the flex plans because that is a very, very big increase. And I don't know that making these type of visits would change our claims ratio very much. One of the ones that I was looking at more in particular that I would make the recommendation is that we switch from a PPO plan to an HMO plan. Same page, so if you take a look at page five, your option seven, which is your HMO Navigate plan. Is everybody familiar with an uh, HMO plan, how that works? Okay, basically you're governed by a PCP that would kind of show what, if you need a specialist, you would have to go through a referral process for those visits. Okay, so that tends to be a money saver as far as network costs are concerned. So if we take a look at that, we'll see that the proposed increase to employees would be $90.45 on an employee only, but you have more benefits there than you have on the flex plan. When doing the comparison as opposed to the flex plan, and this is option number seven, which is gonna again be the alternate to the 500 plan. So again, the ER visit would increase from 200 to 500. You would see an increase to urgent care, which you're going to see on all of these plans. It will go from a $45 copayment to a $100 copayment. However, your major, major diagnostic testing, such as CAT scans, MRIs, etc., which are currently subject to deductible, would now be covered under a $500 copayment. So that would decrease in some cases. We'd also see a slight decrease to copayments from $30 to $25 on PCP, an increase for specialist copayments, so that would go from 30 to 75, an increase to deductible would go from 500 to 1,000. So what was formerly our 500 plan would now offer a $1,000 deductible. And we'd also see an increase to the out-of-pocket max from 3,000 to 6,000 on an individual and 6,000 to 1,320 on a family plan. <laughs> we also have an HMO Navigate plan for the $5,000 plan, which again is where a majority of our employees are sitting. If you look at our enrollment, it's 1,060 or 1,700 employees are sitting on that plan. So on this particular plan, our employees are currently paying $55.29, and the cost to employees would go to $145.75, or an increase of $90.45. For employee and spouse, coverage is currently $541.13, 
that would increase to $772.52, an increase to employee would be $231.40. Employing children was $510.16, an increase would go to $732.57, a difference of $222.41. And our employee family $756.81, that would increase to $1,050.77, an increase of $293.96. So we are seeing quite significant increases. Um, so when we choose our plan this year, we would want to do that extremely carefully. Looking at these numbers, it looks scary. <laughs> it, it's, uh, If we do an apples to apples comparison with Blue Cross Blue Shield, they did offer two alternative plans, one for the $5,000 deductible and one for the $500 deductible. The $5,000 would be an HSA. Um, HSA plan would mean the employee is completely responsible for everything up to the deductible, in this case $5,000. If you can come up to the mic, please, okay. and state your name. If you have any questions, you can come up to the mic, but please state your name. And if you're representing the campus or you're representing yourself, please introduce yourself, what school you're related to, and then you know, your question. Just because we're recording and we want to make sure that everybody knows that there was representation here. Dan Brown from Early Morris High School. And um, I was just looking at this last I don't quite understand like option nine. It says replace the HSA with patient owned Medicaid. Uh, is that what it means? If we find United Healthcare, we wouldn't have an HSA anymore? It would be an HSA plan, so subject to the same $4,000 deductible, but again, your, your benefits would be determined by your PCP. Okay. There, there's a, there's a mic, a loose mic. We can get it for her just as she was in <clears throat> If you can just take, like, like I said, just take your name and uh, who you're representing, please. Thank you, Claudia de Leon uh, Hessa. Um, Mrs. Guajardo, are these, uh, these premiums that, that you're uh, referring to here, um, the, the current, uh, I'm just going to pick one out, out of the, here, uh, for the $500 deductible, uh, the current 471 and so forth, are these bi-weekly or monthly premium amounts? Monthly. 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 <clears throat> Anybody else? We're good. Thank you. Ms. Lohan? My recommendation overall would be that we um, continue with United Healthcare. They have offered us a plethora of plans to choose from. We still have the opportunity to go back and place those plans. I think that we need to look very seriously at the HMO plans. Um, the goal long term is to move this district in the right direction to start where we are a candidate for lower premiums as opposed to knowing well, we've, we've been having this discussion since April. So we've known since April that we were looking at seeing an increase, and now that it's here, it's a little bit scary. Um, by switching plans, by making to where we have employees that are going to be a little more responsible for their full visits and things like that, we can actually start moving in the direct direction. We'll, the insurance company will be paying less in claims overall, which will in turn, at some point, eventually start bringing those premiums going the other way as instead of up. I think if we stay on our current plan designs, we're going to end up in the same boat. Last year we were at 114% by this time of year. This year we were at 135%. So where does that tell us we're going to be next year if we kind of continue on the same path? Mr. Chair? Mr. Maria? The one question that I have uh, is this. I'd like to have uh, the representative from United Healthcare, if she can come up to the podium, because I do have a question. One of the things that comes to my mind is, uh, if you could please come up there, if you could possibly answer my question. If not, I just something that I think is in the best interest of the district is, what are what are some ideas that United Healthcare may have in mind to try to help us as we transition this year into looking at our practices so we can keep this reoccurring 
issue that comes up in Holland. Does United have, have they, Ms. Wilder, have they shared with you or Diana any, any plans of action, how they plan to help our employees? This thing. Um, I'm Karen Woods with United Healthcare, and that's a that's a great question because we have had several meetings, not only with Ms. Guajardo, with with some of the data that we've received in terms of what is driving your claim specifically to diagnosis, not any particular identifiable information of any of your employees, but just in general, what is it that's driving the cost, and so what initiatives can we put in place? I mean. Just for one one, we're gonna be bringing on Real Appeal, which is a weight loss program for your employees as we have found that diabetes is one of the predominant diagnoses within your uh, population. So that is one of the things that we're trying, trying to um, be, at, be proactive and getting to all the different campuses and really pushing the wellness efforts. Um, we can also look deeper into what other things we can do to change. So, so one of the things that um, Ms. Guajardo brought up was um, ER utilization, right? So navigating the system is difficult at times because people don't understand, do I go to my urgent care or do I go to my PCB? I, I just want to get into the emergency room, but they don't understand what that's doing to the, to the actual overall population and, and the plan um, utilization. So um, I think with, with the ability to go forward with um, Jackie or on-site, we have a longer time to be able to make a difference with your population. We have a lot of reporting we can provide. Uh, I think last year what we ran into is there was limited amount of reporting because you, we had only six months of reporting at this time at last year. So now we have a whole year and a half now to really see and drill down to the data and see what initiatives we can put together for next year. Thank you. One, one in, in networking with other CEOs and, and other organizations, would United Healthcare be would consider a, a rubric in the future where uh, maybe employees that do exercise best practices or involved in a healthy lifestyle could they possibly in the future have some of those employees? Because some of the employees that I have come up to me and said, "Hey, sir, I mean, I these are some of the things I do," but then I get bundled in with everybody else. Would United Healthcare ever think in the future about giving those employees? maybe a different rate? So unfortunately, that's given that it's a group plan, we would be then at that point discriminating against those that don't actually engage in their health. And that would not be something we could do. We do offer other programs as incentives for people that are proactive with their health, like the biometric screenings and going to the gym. We do offer gift card incentives that come out of the United Healthcare budget for those uh, employees. So we do offer those incentives so they can gain up to $200 for themselves and for their covered spouses through the year. Um, but in terms of premium, we cannot discriminate between two different populations. Let me ask you another question. Does the, is the idea, is there an idea because of the size of the enrollment that we have a factor? Because my understanding is that there's organizations, of course, much bigger than ours, they do have some type of benefit for employees. Is it does, so that ratio have something to do with it? That wouldn't have anything to do with us. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, that wouldn't be anything on our end. I, we have seen other large employers that do that internally. Um, they offer different packages, but that is not something that the insurance company is able to break out. So we couldn't offer different rates for different people. Thank you. And, and uh, you can stay up there and real quick. Uh, I, I do want to commend her for for breaking it down for us. Uh, one of the board, one of the insurance meetings, she she broke down everything how where we need work at, and that's one of the things you know the emergency thing. You know sometimes it, it makes it easier for us to say, well, let's just go to the emergency. I have, I have insurance. Well, yeah, you have insurance, but then in the long run, it affects not only you, but it affects all of us. You know, it expects, you know, so that it's, it's all education. So if we can find a way to when we're signing them up, give them a, a little form or something that educates them on the importance of, re, you know, debating whether to go to your doctor and go to the emergency room, how it affects and how it hurts the system, and not only how it affects them, but how it hurts your colleagues. Because sometimes we think about ourselves, but then in the long run, we start thinking, well, it doesn't only affect me, but it affects everybody around me. So we can find a way to, to kind of put that in perspective, you know, in a, in a nice, polite, pretty way. 
you know, not straightforward. A lot of times, you know, it's, it's like uh, when, when somebody's in a diet and they keep telling you, but that's what like you're fat, you're fat. Well, you know, you, you don't lose weight because they're, you know, you take it as a, as, as a threat. But if you tell them, hey, you're looking good, you're looking better, you know, it, and that kind of relates to that. So we can find a way to, uh, when we sign them up, to give them a form stating the importance of not going to the emergency room, the importance of going to, to your regular physician, you know, how it changes and how it affects your colleagues. And I think that'll give them a better, broad, broader idea of what, how it affects certain people, how it's easier to get the, the generic brand compared to the, the good brand. The good brand, you know, it, it, it's, it's like, you know, you, you wear the Nikes. You know, you can go and buy yourself Converse a lot cheaper than you can some Nikes. You know, and it, it doesn't hurt. They do the same thing, they protect your feet. You know, so, so just educating, I think, you know, so if we can create something like that, man, that would be, I think that would be awesome. Absolutely. We do already have some pieces that are made up that guide the employee in terms of urgent care, your PCP, what things you should go to for these different, finding the system, right? And we can definitely get those flyers out and, and have those conversations during open enrollment. I think last year we were kind of rushed through the, the whole process, so now we'll have a little bit more time. And, and that's our fault because, you know, we, we should have been prepared. We should have been ready. That, that's, that's the board's fault. So we ended up, you know, making everything be rushed, rushed, rushed. So let, let's see if we can change that, and, and, if we, and if we can have a little bit of time just to speak to a person, acknowledge them, making sure that they understand that they're they're a person, and you don't you don't want to charge them more, right. you know. And that's the other concept that we always think: well, they're just out to make a buck. Well, if we can let them understand that, you know what, you can maybe next year we can reduce it by you doing this practices. It'll it'll benefit you in the long run. Right. Mr. Mr. One of the things that I'd like to share too is kind of along the lines that Mr. Mancha and I'd like to, maybe we can periodically, as we go through the policy, I'm talking about the time of it, if maybe we can let people know where we stand periodically, like quarterly, if we're on target or we're below target or above target, maybe a way to motivate the staff with the idea of the, the data that we have that tells us why, again, the increases in the region, why, we're paying the premiums that we are, that maybe we can have a way of gauging our way as we move along so that way we can let our employees know because in the long run, it's a reflection of how we're utilizing our, our policies. Sure, and any way that we can make that easier. I know um, Ms. Wajardo and I talk, talk pretty often about where we are in terms of you know your loss ratio. Um, so maybe if we can get that out to employees on a maybe quarterly or maybe every two months, whatever you, you, you would like, we can do that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Wajardo? Okay, so, that was interesting. Excuse um, me, too, right, real quick, and we can use Mr. Mancha for the record. Oh, yes, uh, Ms., uh, just for the record, uh, Ms. Casa has joined us about five minutes ago. Presently, 5.40. So, let's say at 5.40. Thank you. Okay, so, just to make sure I understand this. Page five of the tablet. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry. Ms. Wokardo just recently covered all the different plans and options with the committee and, and the audience, and uh, she finished on page five on tab three. Flag, um, Mr. Much, I have a question actually for the um, hey, lady possibly. Yourself, oh, I'm sorry, I'm uh, Kathy Stein, and I'm representing Collier. Um, my question is, we have, do we not have an? Um, I don't know how to exactly call it, but like a Texas Med Clinic or something like that that we allow under the plan. And I'm wondering if maybe we should promote that a little bit more because that's less expensive than going to the emergency room. And you do see the doctor and it's fairly reasonable amount of time that you wait. Sometimes you go to the emergency room and you wait for hours and hours and hours and usually those places are not quite that bad. And maybe we should do some periodic advertising to our employees through email or something to remind them that they have those options. It might cut down a little bit on some of those emergency room visits if they could get into that habit of using that. 
Thank you for bringing that up this time. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, I was just going to say, and I know that uh, Texas Med Clinic is not the only one out there, that there's new ones that are popping up now that are like first choice. Uh, yeah, there's several different ones. Yeah, but that's ones are covered by the plan. Correct. So that would def that's a very good suggestion. And, and, and uh, again, it's kind of along the lines we shared earlier, how can we educate our employees so we can help with bringing the cost ratio down so we can get better premiums. And again, we could provide a list of all those clinics that are available nearest to their location, given the citywide locations, and, and encourage them. And, and then maybe that's how we can monitor and gauge ourselves how we are periodically, and we can kind of encourage employees by email, letting them know how many at that time we had at the end of the first month and where we stand today. And anyway, again, any, in any way in any practice that we can do to bed that would help bring our, our premiums down. Because the bottom line, from what I understand, Ms. Wajardo, correct me if I'm wrong, is the reason for the increase in our benefits the last few years because the cost ratio loss to the company, the insurance company, is far more than what they're bringing in in premiums. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bodega. Can we introduce yourself, please? Julie Gamble with HEA. Um, one of the things I also, because I hear that some of the things that are driving our premiums up high is because of the cost of our employees going to emergency rooms and things of that sort. But I really uh, strongly recommend that, that this year, because this is something that we wanted and we have wanted in the past two years, that is something similar to the white glove where our employees will uh, call uh, whomever it is and they come uh, or they can make that uh, contact, you know, face on the phone or uh, FaceTime and stuff. And, you know, that, that in itself is going to bring the cost down because we're not having to visit those things. So I ask you again, you know, uh, when whoever is chosen, that we make sure that that, um, what is it, the, uh, that product is offered to the employees, please. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gibble. Mr. Chair, um, Ms. Gibble, I just wanted to let you know, so I know that you voiced your concerns regarding White Glove in the past, so I contacted White Glove. White Glove is a, only a product of Edna and Humana. So the only way to have that particular product is to have one of those plans. You can buy it standalone. Um, it's $205 per month is what you would pay. So you can contact White Glove directly, but other than that, it cannot be provided with any other insurance other than Edna and Humana. And unfortunately, both Edna and Humana have declined to bid. We do have a similar product. It's not quite similar. We've talked about it before, which is going to be your virtual visits. Um, we have very low utilization. We actually only had 10 people that have used it for 2016, and one of them was mine. So this is an underused, and, and I think for something basic, sometimes people, you know, you don't want to go to your doctor. Maybe they're open 8 to 5, and that's what we work for the most part. So this may be an answer to that. You know, unfortunately, it's not a come to your home, but it's an app that's downloaded. So we, like, you know, I, I hear you, and I'm looking into it. It's just that type of product may not be something that we're able to obtain. Um, yeah, what I recall was, um, I know White Glove was tied with one of the insurance carriers, but there was other products that were similar to it. Um, and I remember um, that they had mentioned even at, like at a cost of five to ten dollars per employee, um, if we were to you know bring in a, a board. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't recall the name of it. I have it written down, and I can bring that information. But I, and I know that White Glove. I think in the past was probably tied to Humana, and now and we have to have their insurance. But there's other similar products that we can probably look at and and see, because I know that that was one of the the um, concerns that the employees wanted. They didn't have to leave or, you know, they could make, um, and it's like a win-win for everyone. Uh, I have a question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Uh, for Ms. Gimbel. What exactly does White Glove provide? I can't remember exactly what services. Can you remind me, Ms. Gimbel? Uh, um, well, I'm not, it's something that our employees could call and tell them how they were feeling, what symptoms that they have, and the doctor or whoever was on the other end of the line would make a prescription for them without them seeing the doctor, and they would just pick up the prescription. Um, 
they wouldn't have to go to work or, I mean, uh, miss work or anything like that. And then sometimes, from what I understand, they even came and uh, made those visits at that time we, where we had it like three or four years where they were coming here to the, to the job site or their, or their home or wherever they were at. Okay, thank you. But yeah, there's some, and I think the, the last meeting they actually said it was something like virtual that they could even do, is like FaceTiming and um, to yeah, see I what was wrong. This one is for Harlow, just mentioned right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you, you're talking about the virtual doctor, Mrs. Guajardo, I think everybody felt that it was a good, you know, that was also a win win. But you're saying that in this past year, only about 10 employees took advantage of that? So we, we weren't aware that we had that because I know that when we, um, okay, so how many of you were aware that you had that, that you, you were aware of it? Everybody else? No? Okay. So yes, I guess. Press the button or I, I, I just kind of want to make a recommendation on yes, that, uh, Mr. Mancha, to make sure that our HR department, no. that we, if we do go with, the vendor that has that option, that we make sure that we make the employees aware that there is, that option is available. That's one of our initiatives. So when we talk about the ER utilization, it's to make sure that our employees are aware that there are virtual visits. It's very, very simple. Okay. So that is one of our initiatives. Thank you. Hi, my name is Marty Ferrari. I work in the insurance department with the benefits. Um, the White Glove never did a virtual, they never did anything online. They actually, you would call them and they would set up an appointment and they would come out to see you. They would come out to work, they would come out to your home. I've used it plenty of times for myself and my children. So it was never done online. It would, they actually had to come out and see you. They weren't actual doctors. They were actually like PAs or um, nurse assistants. Mm -hmm. So they were the ones that would come out. So they didn't, that's what they did. Oh. Um, the virtual. And that we have with United Healthcare, that's actually in our enrollment booklets as well. So our employees had access to the booklet, and it's and there was a page on it. There was a page on it last year.